All right, guys, welcome back to Real Estate Investing with Alex Deacon. We have, it's almost like a sequel. We're segueing. Yeah. Unintentionally, we just talked about, I mean, intentionally, we just talked about how to properly budget for your repairs, uh, property management, and vacancies in our last episode. In this episode, we're going to talk to you about proper, uh, proper budgeting for your next flip. Was this intended? Absolutely not. But sometimes happenstance is the greatest form of art and learning. So we're going to roll with it. What do you say, Alex? Let's roll, baby. All right. So, um, Alex, let's talk about um, when you're looking at a, at a, a potential flip, uh, what we should budget for, potential red flags, overcoming obstacles, what, you know, are there obstacles? Let's let's dip right in. Yeah, I thought it would be, be great to um, segue into this. And plus, right now I'm doing – I was just uh, – Budgeting, not budgeting. I was thinking like, what my profit or not, <laughs> what my profit or lack of profit is going to be on my next like five flips. <laughs> so I'm doing. I'm probably doing like five right now. So, um, yeah, I was looking at them. I'm like, dang, I'm not going to make any money there because it took me too long. I just you have to know your numbers, and I usually just run with it. Right. I figured whatever I make, I'm going to make instead of you know. Figuring out what I'm going to make and why I didn't, why I wasn't profitable on this one. What could I have done better? So on and so forth. But you know, some of them I'm going to make. I could make thirty thousand dollars on a flip. It doesn't sound like much because you know you see the shows on TV where they're making a hundred thousand, but it's not realistic around right. here. <laughs> and I don't know if it's realistic anywhere. But like you know, and it's uh, one I'm going to maybe shoot. I might not make any money honestly. Because look, it looks like I'm going to make about ten. But um, there could be some things that come up on the home inspection. There could be some things that I that's not in my accounting software yet, you know, because I might have hand wrote a check to somebody and not told my bookkeeper. So that check might be for two grand. It, it wasn't uploaded into uh, QuickBooks system, yet. Right. So yeah, I could make zero on something. So my honestly, my lender, the guy that lent me the money, is probably going to make as much as I made or more in interest. <laughs> Wow. That's not uncommon. Yeah. But out of five flips, um, let's just say I'm going to make maybe 75000 So, you know, one, it's one, I, one I won't make any on and one I'll make 30000 on. So That's it's nice. you got to take the, what's in, in the middle. Yeah. But it's so important to, to properly budget for repairs, a realistic holding time. You know, how long is it going to take to get that done? How much time do you have to commit to that project? Because it's super important, man. I got one right now that's costing me two grand a month to hold it because of my in- the interest rate. Probably actually more than that. I mean, here, let me. That's amazing. Every time I do this, I, I feel ill. So, but let's let's do it. Why not? <laughs> so I get the thumbs up. So, 160,000. I think I'm paying like 10 percent, maybe 11 percent interest. So, 0.11 equals. That's sixteen thousand divided by twelve is thirteen hundred thirty-three dollars a month just in interest, right? Then the taxes, uh, probably another th- three, four hundred taxes, insurance, utilities. It's almost two grand a month. Okay. That's so that's two wild. grand a month. So how important is it to get that done when my profit margin on that property is maybe twenty? So every month it just drops by ten yeah. percent. 18, 16, and, and who knows when the market's going to change and when it's going to go up or down. Uh, so, cause like around here in the summer months, like if you put something on the market and you hit it at the wrong time and you price it high like in the spring and then in the summer it starts to slow down because of vacations and school's out and people are at weddings and they're in picnics and vacations are out enjoying the sun, it really does slow down. Then you hit that market at the wrong time, it could to be a major swing mm. but we're just we're sticking to budgeting now so properly budgeting for repairs super important and it seems like I'm always not budgeting enough for plumbing <laughs> plumbing okay? so no, no you know shout out to all the plumbers out there you guys do a great <laughs> job my, my plumber's fantastic it's just I don't budget it's my fault I don't budget enough for it okay so now I'm. I think I'm going to. I'm trying to over budget because you know how bad you want a project to work. You want to make it work. You want to buy mm-hmm. and then buy another one, buy another one, and just feel like you're getting somewhere. But 
if you if you continually buy these properties and, and rehab them and don't make a profit or make a small profit, it's not going to be worth your time. Now, where do you typically under um, under budget for plumbing? Like, what do you usually miss, or is it different in? I, every- yeah, I, it's just. It's such an unknown, especially in a lot of houses that I buy, right? They're they're vacant. They're REOs, real estate owned by banks. So you don't know what kind of plumbing you're going to get it, into. And sometimes you don't have the ability to do inspections on the property. So therefore, you don't know what the sewer line is going to be. We had that one sewer line that cost us twenty grand. I always think about that. So yeah. it just, you don't know. So budget a little higher for plumbing. Budget higher, budget more for some of your mechanicals. It's really, you need to know your numbers. You need to know how much that electrician is going to charge, okay? And you know prices are going up. These guys got to—they got to eat. They got to feed their family. They're going to—they're—they're they're skilled tradesmen. They got to make money. So, yeah, if you have your own staff and you're able to get this stuff done cheaper, then great for you. But if you don't, you better be willing to pay for it because time is money. So, for instance, if you have your own people and you can get them to do this work and you get them to do it quickly. Then of course you're not going to hire a plumber to, to install a hot water tank because it's not rocket science. Mm-hmm. But if it's going to take that guy two months to get that hot water tank installed, where the plumber could have done it in three days, and that's causing grief with the other stages of the, you know, if the plumber can't, if you can't get water there and you can't get hot water and you can't get water to your faucets and the painters can't paint, then that plumber who's taking that guy you hired who's taking two months to do the job is causing the drywallers to be delayed, the painters the flooring, everything. So the mechanicals have to get done and get done quickly. You have to have electric. you got to have safe electric. you got to have heat. In some cases, if it's winter, you're going to have to have heat for paint to dry and and drywall to to set and plaster and stuff. And you're going to have to have water, you know, heat, water, electricity. So Mm -hmm. those things need to get done quickly. So the quicker you get them done, the better, but you have to budget enough for them. Okay, so too many times I see people make the mistake and they don't budget enough or they get a surprise. So within your budget, there should be like a surprise line item. Mm-hmm. Surprise, and then throw a number in there. So like kitchens are easy, right? Kitchens are, you can figure out a kitchen basically by linear foot. Like I know we we have ours figured out to somewhere around $200. I don't even look at it that way. I just, I can look at a kitchen and know. So I'll budget. A lot of times I'll just budget. If it's a decent sized kitchen, I'm budgeting ten grand. It's a real small, like, little kitchenette in a small efficiency apartment. We're talking granite countertops and, and fairly nice cabinets. And they're they're inexpensive, but I'm going to budget maybe four grand with appliances. So all my kitchens are typically between four and ten. Okay. If it's a really nice big house, then you're going to budget more because it's extravagant. And there's some islands to it. And there's different crown molding. Right. And you're going with taller cabinets and stuff like that. But you can literally figure out flooring by square foot. You know, the thing you can miss on flooring, though, is what's under the floor. Like, I just did a house recently that it, you know, the flooring might have cost me four grand, but instead it cost me five because there was, the subfloor was all rotted out. So it cost me an extra thousand. So when you're, again, when you're figuring out flooring, you can most of the time walk through it and realize that it is what it's going to be. I know exactly what it's going to cost me per square foot. But that's where that surprise budget comes in. Surprise, I didn't realize there was termite damage under these joists, which is holding the the floor up so uh, you know what i mean okay. you have to surprise for that so uh flooring is relatively easy once you get your head wrapped around that you know what it's going to cost you know what a kitchen's going to cost you know what appliances are going to cost you know what a hot water tank is going to cost you know what a furnace is going to cost once you once you do this enough you know you can just walk through the place and go three thousand two thousand fifteen hundred it's that easy a front door you know what that is you know what a window is this is how much Per window, except that for larger windows or big extravagant windows with stained glass, things like that, those are completely different. Just talking garden variety windows and doors. So you know what all that's going to cost. Uh, the things where I get stuck on, like, I don't know what concrete's going to cost. I don't know what the driveway's going to cost. So I'm like, you know, throwing a big number out for that. I'm not real good with, with that because we don't do a lot of driveways and stuff. Um, budget enough for your plumbing, budget en- enough for your electrical you know, budget enough for your HVAC. Because just remember, just because the the roof is not leaking doesn't mean it's not going to come back to bite you on a home inspection. Like the one I'm selling that's I'm going to make ten grand on, I have a really strong feeling that roof's going to be a, a, a sticking point with the home inspector. Like, hey, this roof's not leaking, but it's near its last, you know. And you got a couple years left. And so now I'm going to have to either reduce the price or maybe put a new roof on if I want it sold. If not, I'm going to start all over again. And then what's it cost me every month when I start over again? 
it's holding costs. Yeah. If for, so for that one, it's like a thousand. So if I'm going to make ten and I have to start all over again, I have to hold it a thousand every month, a thousand, There's a thousand. Numbers. And then the next buyer, what are they going to find when they do their home inspection? Everything that the, yeah, the roof. So you take it, take your lumps now, and get rid of it, learn from it, and move on. And we did talk about actually using, uh, making sure you use a home inspector too uh, in a previous podcast. So go back and check that out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So yeah, you have to definitely properly budget. So get to know your numbers. It's not hard to to learn learn these. I mean, you could you could learn these without ever buying a property. You know, it's just going to take a lot longer. It's a lot easier for me to do this than is for someone who doesn't do it. But the ones that are tricky are the things that you can't see. Like, you can't see the termite damage under the floor. You can't see that $20,000 sewer line. You know, unless you're doing home inspections and really digging deep, you don't see these things. Sometimes you don't have time to do those inspections because there's so much competition. You just have to buy it and take your chances. Mm-hmm. So I always, so you know, I always end up, end up going over my budget. It's just common. It's, it's very common. So I'm trying to be more cognizant of my budget and over and over budgeting. I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather lose the deal. And yeah, maybe I was wrong on that one. I could have made thirty grand, and that guy got lucky. But in the long run, if you do a hundred flips and you don't do your due diligence and you're just guessing and hoping for things to happen, right? You're going to end up. In, in, in a bad place you know, you're, if you're guessing you're all gonna, the time it's yeah. better to walk away yeah. yep yeah. absolutely so you know budget higher for certain things know your numbers make sure you're budgeting enough for uh, the mechanicals as the things you can't see and knowing what to budget for too is half the battle it's like so if you don't know what you don't know then you as a, a, a beginner don't really know what to budget for now, when I look at an electrical service in a box, I, I, even if it looks really good and solid, maybe it's fuses, and I'm like, that's not going to work. I know that's going to come back to bite me in a home inspection. Mm-hmm. Let me just do it now. That's a thousand bucks. Right. You know. Right. Um, all these outlets are two pronged outlets, not three pronged. I know that's going to come back, and it's going to be an issue. Why don't we just do it now? It's you know forty dollars per outlet or something like that. Right. So knowing what to budget for sometimes half the battle. Stand ahead of the game. Yeah. So that just that's just going to come with with experience but um, and then you have that that last line item that surprise mm-hmm. that's the one so let's say I'm doing an eighty thousand uh, dollar rehab so that's the total cost then maybe I'm adding another ten percent to that you know maybe I'm tacking on another eight or ten thousand for surprise but I bet you didn't expect to see me here <laughs> yep so throw that in there. <coughs> So unless you've done, you were able to do like a really uh, detailed home inspection, like have the sewer line camera, the, the, the sewer line camera, right? You know what's good. That's a big question mark. If you know the house is only 12 years old, so most likely all the wiring is good. All the outlets are three-pronged. They're good. It's a lot easier to do budgets on like something that's relatively new then it's, it's just an old house and you have to gut it because right. you have no idea what you're going to run into. Right. So, yeah, there's it's something like um, going in and walking through a property. I can walk through a property a lot quicker if it's newer. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's cookie cutter, it's in a plan that all the houses were built about the same time. They're all about the same construction type. I can walk through it real quickly. Boom, boom, boom. There's very little surprises. It's the bigger projects or the older houses that can really come back to bite you. Um, here's a, a, a one that it's got me a few times is the house has ha- had a boiler okay and when I bought it the furnace was working fine okay and then when the tenant moved out something something happened like they might have moved out and had the the heat shut off and, and I wasn't paying attention and maybe I should have but the, the point was once I got into it I had to do I had to install a whole new heating system and and we the boilers were all cracked like the radiators were all cracked so we just went with a whole new forced air unit with air conditioning oh, and that cost me like seven grand but it it probably added I had budgeted to replace the boiler so it was like thirty five hundred so I guess in the long run it, I probably broke is okay there because now I sold a, I'm selling a house with air conditioning 
and all new ductwork, new furnace, forced air. Where before I would have had, so I spent seven grand there. Before I would have spent thirty five hundred, thirty five, and still had these old ugly radiators in the house, and still had no air conditioning. So it's worth it. So it wasn't so bad. But those are the things that come back and, and gotcha. bite you if you're not ready for it. So okay. So what we got? Big thing. Know your numbers. Mechanicals are important. Um, get a little surprise line in there just in mm-hmm. case. Um, right. Factor in about ten percent, maybe give or take. It, whatever. It's, it's so hard to say. Whatever you're comfortable with. But, there you go. And it varies from job to job. You know, um, from flip to flip. And don't be surprised. Um, avoid surprises. Surprises could be the downfall of any deal. Yeah. Yeah, so that that's where, like, you know, we, we say knowledge is power. Mm-hmm. It is knowledge is power because the more you know, the more you've done this, the easier this is going to be to budget for these things and know what the unknown may be and budget for it. That's why I said that surprise line item yeah. on something that's really tricky, I might put 20% in there, right? On that newer house that's 12 years old, I might put a 5% budget in there because yeah. someone's living there, the utilities are all on, it's all working, it's it's just house is a hundred years old thirty percent maybe <laughs> yeah so it just really yeah it, it depends so that's um that's my ten minutes spiel for, for there today. you go was that yeah, about ten minutes I think it was it was it was a good we're, we're fifteen minutes but Phew. you know how we always yeah. we joke for me it was a good I think it was a strong twelve minutes we Urgh, yeah probably a strong twelve a okay. sloppy four but they probably appreciated it all yeah that's as long as they as long as you guys get something out of it that's all I care about <laughs> listen guys make sure you're following us on Twitter Facebook all over the internet. Uh, just search Deacon Hoover or Deacon Hoover Real Estate Advisors. Uh, make sure you're following Alex on uh, his meetup group uh, on meetup.com. It's Alex Deacon Real Estate Investment Workshops. Uh, we have over 500 real estate professionals and investors in this group now. Um, be the first to get all the latest updates on his workshops. Um, Search this podcast all over podcasting platforms. Apple, Google, you name it, we're out there. Um, I am Adam. This has been Alex for everybody here at Deacon Hoover. We greatly appreciate you tuning in, and we'll see you next time.